This is for the person who is especially shy. Amy says, I want to meet new people, but I feel so shy. Any tips on how to be more outgoing? Another one for you, Nancy. You are the least shy dog I know. <laughs> You're so outgoing. Nancy actually really might have something to teach us about shyness. When we look at animals and why they are shy, why they don't want to come up to us, why they run away when we're around, it's because they're afraid. It's rooted in fear. They worry about what happens if they come up to us. Can they trust us? Are we going to hurt them? And I think it's exactly the same with people. I think a lot of times we tell ourselves all of these irrational stories about what will happen if I approach someone. What will happen if I start up that conversation? What if I'm rejected? What if they think I'm stupid? What if they don't want to talk to me? All of these hypothetical things, which once again, they're all in our head. They don't have any grounds in reality. And so, in order to overcome shyness, we have to examine those under the microscope, look at them a little bit closer, and say, are these things things that I should actually be worrying about? Or are they just anxious, irrational thoughts? And of course, we all have anxious, irrational thoughts, and they are hard to move through. In no way am I belittling that. But if they're irrational things, they are things that we have in our control. They are things that if we lean into them, we can move past them. I think it's important to get to the root of why you are so shy. Was it something from your childhood where you were often being told that people don't want you around, people aren't interested in your opinion? Was it something that happened to you along the way? Did you get rejected by someone? Did you get hurt by someone? Did someone say something about you which made you feel totally humiliated? Think about experiences in your past that might have led to this point. When we get to an extreme situation, it's because we've had this little drip effect. It hasn't happened overnight. Some of it may just be in our DNA, but a lot of it is through our lived experiences. What we have seen of the world and what it's taught us about how confident we can safely be. Our brain is always on the lookout for danger, and that's what keeps us shy. Whenever we think about approaching someone and the fear response is like, oh God, but what if this happens? That's because our brain senses danger. But a lot of the time, that danger isn't real. And actually, if we went up to that person and spoke to them and introduced ourselves, it would be lovely. And we would meet a new person that way. And all of these worst case scenarios that we're playing out inside our mind wouldn't happen. I think a really important thing that's helped me with shyness in the past, because believe it or not, I'm not the most outgoing of people. I definitely was when I was a kid. My parents always used to say that whenever I would go to the play park or something, I'd run into somebody and go off and make some new friend. But over the years, this is what I'm saying, plays into my point. Things have happened to me that have made me go, oh God, no, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I, I don't want to make that phone call. I don't want to, you know, go up to that person and say, hi, I'm Fern, nice to meet you. It's scary. I get the fear. But what's happened is that I've realized empathy is really important when it comes to shyness. We need to understand that actually we're probably putting people on pedestals. It's so easy to look at somebody and be like, you are so much better than me. You are so much more popular, you are so much more beautiful, you come from such a different background, you are blind, I can't relate to you, so therefore I couldn't talk to you, and see the differences, and those things create fear, create the unknown, and in turn, create shyness. Because we don't relate to that person, we don't feel safe in that situation. We all of a sudden think, what if I say something and they're offended, or they think I'm an idiot, or it just doesn't match with who they are because I don't know about who they are. I know nothing about them. It holds us back. What we need to do instead is to see that people aren't so different to us, that at their core, they are just people. I remember when I was about nine years old, S Club 7, hit 90s pop band, came to my primary school 
and did a little performance of their first song and they were all lined up and everyone went and got an autograph and I was front of the queue, very excited, nine-year-old fangirl, back before the fangirl word had even been created and I went along the line and got all of their autographs and when I got to Paul, I handed him the card that they were all signing the picture of them. I thought he wasn't ready so I quickly took it back and he did that, he did, you know, like the cat thing, like, duh, I'm gonna get it. Like, who's playing like a game with me, who's gonna get the, the bit of card? And I just saw him as such a human being. Now, when I look back on that, in hindsight, I think, God, I could have been so nervous and so intimidated by these people who have achieved such success as I could never dream of. But actually, they're just human beings. They're just like me and you. They make mistakes exactly the same. They feel stupid exactly the same. They worry about rejection exactly the same. They're just the same as me when it comes down to it. That is the key to overcoming shyness. The people you are worried about meeting, the people you're worried about making a fool of yourself in front of, the people you think are going to judge you so harshly, have all experienced those same feelings themselves. They all do the same things you do. They get up in the morning and they brush their teeth. They look forward to their dinner at night. They lay in bed on a lazy Sunday afternoon with nothing better to do because it's human behavior. We're all the same. Stop putting people on a pedestal. Stop telling yourself that everyone is so much more perfect and flawless and would never do anything wrong. It's just not true. It's irrational. And it's stopping you from moving forward and making great connections. We have to be realistic about this. We have to understand that actually people value human connection. Even if you do something stupid, they will see you as an authentic, honest human being rather than some kind of perfect robot. People love all that stuff. That's the stuff they can relate to. That's the stuff that makes them want to be your friend. Give it a go. Have a little bit more faith in yourself. Walk up to that person, even if you're nervous, and just see how similar, how much of a human being they are just like you. I hope this advice has helped you. I hope you get out there and meet some new faces very soon. And do leave me a question in the comments because I want to answer your one coming up next.